Hello, today we're looking at the heart and the blood vessels in the body, but we're going to start off by doing the labels of the heart, and there are a few that you need to know and remember. But the first thing is you have to remember that as you're looking at the page there or the screen, the right side is labeled as the left and the left side is labeled as the right for the heart. It's like imagining it's your own heart you're labeling. So two key words, atrium and ventricle. And if you can remember those two words, you'll be able to do four labels quite easily. So over there we have the left atrium and the left ventricle. And also worth remembering actually that atrium is one. If you've got more than one atrium you're talking about, then it's atria. On the other side, we have also atrium and ventricle, but it's the right atrium and ventricle. So if you can remember those two words, there are four labels there that you can easily remember. That's the four chambers of the heart. The rest of the labels are to do with the blood vessels that go into the heart and leave the heart. So two that we're going to start off with are the pulmonary artery. And just a note here that anytime you see the word pulmonary, it's often to do with the lungs. So this is the artery that goes to the lungs. There we go, lungs. And once it's gone to the lungs and it comes back again, it will come back via the pulmonary vein. So there's the pulmonary vein coming back from the lungs. So that's two major blood vessels uh, related to the heart. The next one is the aorta. This is probably uh, the biggest artery in the body. It's the aorta, the main artery leaving the heart to go to the body. It comes back into the heart as the vena cava. The vena cava is a vein and it's the main vein that returns from the body to the heart. We also have these structures here and these are all valves. They're between the atria and the ventricles and also at the beginning of the main blood vessels leaving the heart. And they're very important because they make sure that blood travels in the right direction, in one direction only and in the right direction. You might see the heart drawn like this. This is more like a picture than a diagram, but you might see it like this as well. And you should be able to label the main blood vessels here as well. So the one at the top there is the aorta. That will then go around the body and come back and that will be the vena cava. And as you can see, there are actually two branches of the vena cava there going back into the heart. We've also got the pulmonary artery. I've just changed the label there slightly, you might have noticed. But we've got the pulmonary artery that goes to the lungs and the pulmonary vein that comes back from the lungs to the heart. One other label that we haven't got on a diagram on the left is the coronary arteries. These are the arteries that actually give blood to the heart so it can have its oxygen and glucose and nutrients so it can pump away. If we have coronary heart, heart disease, it's those arteries that are affected, not the main ones that travel through the heart. So the next thing we're going to look at is this idea of a double circulation. Humans and mammals have a double circulation. And that's to do with the fact that there are two loops in the circulation of blood around the body. Just to remind ourselves, though, what is the importance of the heart? Why is the heart so important? It's because it needs to pump blood around the body. And blood is really important because it carries nutrients to all the blood cells, and all the blood cells, to all the cells in the body. It carries nutrients to all the cells in the body. And it's also important because it carries away waste from those cells. So it delivers off nutrients and picks up waste. What do we mean by nutrients? Well, the nutrients, a couple of examples of the nutrients are things like glucose for respiration and also oxygen, which is also for respiration, but other substances as well, like amino acids from digestion. We also have waste being carried away. And one example of a waste material is urea or carbon dioxide and others too. For example, lactic acid, which is produced when you do heavy exercise that needs to be taken away as well. So the blood is very important and it needs to be pumped constantly around the body. And this is achieved by the double circulation. So in our double circulation, we have two loops. The first one is from the heart to the lungs and back to the heart again. So that's the first loop. And when the blood goes to the heart, it drops off carbon dioxide that is picked up from the cells in the body and picks up oxygen from the fresh air breathed into the lungs. So in the lungs, we get gas exchange. The second loop goes from the heart 
to the body, which includes the head as well, and back to the heart again. So this is going to the body, including the head, and back to the heart again. So that second loop we can just make a note of. So that goes from the heart to the body and back to the heart again. Now we could actually be a bit more specific in terms of our two loops. So the first loop that we've talked about going to the lungs, that actually goes from the right ventricle. So the blood goes from the right ventricle of the heart to the lungs and back to the heart again into the left atrium. In terms of our second loop, it goes from the left ventricle to the body and back to the heart again. So this is what we refer to as our double circulation. In one full journey around the body, the blood will visit the heart twice. So it starts at the right ventricle, goes to the lungs, picks up some oxygen, goes back to the heart again, gets a big push, and then travels to the body, including the head, drops off the nutrients, oxygen and so on, picks up carbon dioxide, and then back to the heart again. So this is our double circulation. What we're going to do next is have a look at the details of the blood vessels, including the arteries and the veins and the capillaries. We can look at them more closely here. So we can put the direction of the blood flow in there. So it's going from right to left on your screen. And on the far right, we have the artery. Remember, this is the blood vessel that came from the heart. If we slice it across there and look at what we call a cross section, it would look something like that. The artery then branches off to these smaller blood vessels have a very similar structure but are smaller and they're called arterioles and I put those in brackets because they're actually not mentioned in the spec but it's good to know. Those arterioles branch off to make these tiny blood vessels called capillaries and then the capillaries will join up to make blood vessels called venules. Again not in the spec but good to know and those venules will then join up to produce or to make our veins and the veins look a bit more like this. So we can go through and look at how the structure of these each help them to do their job. So in terms of our artery we've got a thick muscular wall on the outside you can see that in that light pink color and that's really important because the thickness helps to withstand the pressure that's of the blood that's in there because it's just come from the often just come from the heart but also the thick muscular wall can contract and it can help to move blood along. So the contraction that contraction of that wall helps to move the blood. We also, just below the muscle layer, have a layer of elastic tissue, which is quite thick compared to our veins. And the good thing about that is that it can and does, in fact, recoil, or in other words, spring back. So it can help to absorb the pressure, but it also, when it springs back, can keep the pressure high in order to help keep the blood moving. So we've got thick muscular walls and elastic tissue in our arteries. It's also probably important to mention the part in the middle there. It's called a lumen and the artery has a narrow lumen. That's where the blood flows. And that's because of the thick muscular walls and the thick elastic tissue surrounding the artery. In terms of our capillaries, well, these are actually very, very tiny. If I drew it, drew it to the right scale, you wouldn't actually be able to see it at all but we draw it larger so you can see the details of it. And the artery, not the arteries, the capillaries have very thin walls. And that's really important because it will reduce diffusion distance. And that's very useful for oxygen leaving the capillaries to go into cells or oxygen entering the capillaries from the lungs. So those thin walls help do that. And in fact, the walls are literally only one cell thick. So the walls on the capillaries are made of only one cell and that makes them very thin. One cell thick or one cell thin I guess you could say. Also the capillaries are very narrow and because they're so narrow red blood cells that carry that important oxygen can only travel down them one at a time. They travel down the capillaries in single file and that means again there's a shorter diffusion distance and often these red blood cells are pressed against the walls of the capillaries, which means further shortening of that diffusion distance. The other thing about capillaries is not about their individual structures, but the fact that there is lots and lots of them throughout the whole body. And because there's so many of them and they're so narrow and with the thin walls, that 
maximizes the exchange of substances, whether it's oxygen going in, carbon dioxide coming out of cells into them, or other nutrients in the body. So that's our capillaries. Now in terms of our veins, the first thing is that we have very thin walls. There is a thin layer of muscle and a thin layer of elastic tissue. And we also have a large lumen. So where the blood travels is much larger in veins, and that's because of the thinner walls and thinner muscle and thinner elastic tissue. This is fine for the veins to have those thinner walls because they have to deal with less pressure than the arteries do. The other thing about the uh, veins is that they have these structures called valves. So if we just uh, move that up slightly, and as you can see, the valves are like one-way doors. So on the diagram on the left there, the blood can quite happily travel through and upwards. But on the second diagram, if the blood moves backwards, then the valves shut and don't allow the blood to flow backwards. We also have the fact that the thin walls make them very easy to squeeze and squash and flatten. So muscles contracting from everyday movements will squeeze those veins. And that in combination with the valves will keep the blood moving in one direction. So there we go. Let's just add a quick note about that as we've done on the screen there. So that's basically it. We have our arteries, our veins and our capillaries. These are the main blood vessels that we need to be able to describe. In red there, these are the key features of those different blood vessels. So let's highlight those. And then we also have a description of why those features are so important. Okay, so thanks for watching and I'll see you again in the next one.